Hello, investing friends. Welcome into Investors Club. I have with me the great Jacob Braun from Braun Capital. Jacob, uh, we've, has, we've talked with Jacob a couple of times. He's been so kind to invite us onto his show. We've talked mostly about cassava in the past, also about Netlist. Uh, Jacob's here to talk with us about Netlist and whatever else we want to we uh, rap about. And uh, so glad that he's here. Jacob, great to see you. Yeah, thank you for having me on, Joe. Um, Boy, Netless and Cassava, they're both crazy stories and um, they always keep you entertained. Oh my, that's never a dull moment. I, I know. And, and the, 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 with the, the lawyers now for both of them, it's getting so legal in addition to being so technical and, uh, and, 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 and then plus all the financial stuff. So yeah, it's uh, it never a dull moment. Uh, we already have, we already have people uh, saying, saying, uh, I, I, people are already leaving comments. I'm just going to assume that they're saying, great to see you. <laughs> we have, we have uh, Jupiter is here. Great to see you, Jupiter. Kareem is here. Great to see you, Kareem. <laughs> Kareem says, I know you're already going to ask all the questions that I want the answer to. Just want to hear to smart, two smart dudes discuss my favorite stock net list. Thank you, my friend Kareem. And Pale says, thoughts on effects on Netlist of uplisting to NASDAQ once trials are over, would T0 be better? Um, yeah, I, I think that's a, that does, that's a very interesting question. Um, I, I really like what T0 is doing. Uh, I think the problem with T0 and the reason why you would go with Netlist or Net NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, but probably NASDAQ in this case, because it's cheaper, um, is because of the, the ETFs and the, you know, the Russell 2000 index and whatnot that would invest in it. So the biggest thing that what the NAS pulling yourself off the OTC does is it opens up who can invest to you. And I think that if you're on T0, you're going to have that same issue as if you're OTC, um, even though, you know, T0 fi fixes a lot of issues. But the problem is a lot of people can't just access it regularly on whatever trading platform they are. So that's the number one issue. Many people won't be able to invest in it. And number two, I don't believe indexes would track companies on T0. So you'd want to get on the NASDAQ. And once you get on the NASDAQ, if you get in an index, uh, for example, a Russell 2000 or Russell 3000, um, that potentially buys a few million of your shares. Right. If your market cap is, you know, a few hundred million, well, Netless is, I believe, is um, close to a billion. Um, so if they're buying, you know, twenty, thirty million dollars worth of shares, that's really going to help um, one stabilize that price and two boost that price. Um, you'll you'll see as companies go quarter to quarter and continue to rise that there's almost a tailwind behind them as funds continue to have to increase their. Uh, positioning uh, based on the market cap weighting. And also as a company falls, you'll have to reverse. So I think if they can get on the NASDAQ, whenever that is, um, that would be very good. Yep. But the one issue I believe is the one thing that Netless doesn't meet is I believe they do not have a board of directors, a public board of directors. And that's something that you need to be listed on the NASDAQ. Interesting. Interesting. So we're sort of getting ahead of ourselves there. So the terrific insights there about the uh, this sort of uh, cumulative effect of uh, of indexes uh, needing to buy you up uh, to, to stay current as you, as you get larger uh, that then get get included in more indexes so that's very interesting stuff thank you for that uh, to, now you've talked you've spoken with you've actually met with the T0 executives a team of them over there can you remind our viewers and then let's step back and sort of remind our viewers after that of the the, the more general uh, more general uh, thesis on 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 netlist but so the, the idea of, of, so Netlist is not on NASDAQ now, it's not on T0 now. Uh, can, you, can you remind our, our viewers what T0 is? Yeah, so well, first, Netlist is, was originally listed on NASDAQ and then it fell to become a penny stock. Now it sits around just under $2, but it fell down to, down to about 10 cents at its lowest points, but um, it didn't meet the listing criteria to be on NASDAQ. So when that happened, it went um, to OTC or, or the counter or pink sheets, yep. penny stocks, whatever you want to call it. And um, it's a lot less regulated, um, usually higher fees to trade and it's less liquid. So, but you have to, you know, you could still be a public company on there before you can meet the criteria to be back on a big exchange. Yep. Uh, 
for T0. Yeah, I met with the the T0 um people for uh for some stuff for Braun Capital and they're all very intelligent people looking to change the the way things are done. Yeah. Um in essence what T0 is, it's is a it's a new exchange. So they're really fighting against um Nasdaq and New York Stock Exchange. So an exchange is kind of where your shares are listed and what that means is kind of like it's kind of, it, it, there's, I don't have a great like analogy for it, but, um, it think about is it, like at the end of the day, it's the last piece of information for where your, your shares are like traded or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're on the NASDAQ, New York stock exchange in today's markets, it doesn't have a big difference from what my understanding, but, um, anything else does. Um, so T zero is looking to do, um, a new thing by having everything be on a public ledger, um, also known kind of as a blockchain. Right. And by using this blockchain technology, which is relatively um, revolutionary, people are looking across the the market, every aspect of business to applications of blockchain. And, um, you know, obviously there's some in finance and they believe that having a public ledger for every single share um, could solve many of the issues seen in today's stock market whether that's um manipulation alleged manipulation alleged fake shares or phantom shares that are being traded by people um and i say alleged because i don't have any personal proof sure. that this is happening but this has obviously been very talked about with the gamestop case um with uh amc with other things can, can you uh us, and why to, to go with that can you tell us why they're called t0 to go along with what you're saying there with the shenanigans yeah that's that's a good uh that's another good question so they what the, yeah so what they're going to do is basically by having the, everything be on this public ledger um everything's accounted for everyone can view it and it just basically sunlight is the best disinfectant yeah um their name is t0 and what that means is it'll be zero days of settlement, um, which it, today it's T is uh, T plus two, I believe. So it's your transaction day plus two days before your settlement. And what that means is if you make a trade that day plus two more business days until the trade officially has gone through. Yep. And that allows a little leeway if something like glitches or something happens um, without... Uh, you know, for people to fix issues or, but um, it also allows different things with shorting and whatnot. Um, obviously, originally this was done because trades were done in paper or on less powerful computers. But now with the computing technology, the way it is, it's so powerful yep. that many people are questioning, why do we still have these antique um, trading rules when we have the computing technology to not have them? Um, so what blockchain does is, whether in finance, you using cryptocurrency, whether you're using it in this technology, everything is instant settlement. Um, so, it, so for example, yeah. if you make a ACH bank payment, it takes you know weeks to process before it's fully gone from your bank to the other bank. But if I send you Bitcoin, it would all happen within you know at most ten minutes. It'll yeah. be fully gone. Right. There is no reversing of it. But it's fully gone through and instantly settled. And so it's like likewise with that. When you would make your trade, it would be your trade would be done. And you you there wouldn't be all this leeway with time between trades, the trade which um is, has it. many benefits um for different things. Yep. Yep. The trade, the trade is the settlement, as they like to say. Yep. Yeah, but those those are very good questions. And yeah. again, that's just my understanding of the topics. Yeah. Um, these are broad topics that are very complex. So um, there's definitely things I glossed over. That so that's totally so I really appreciate that. So so that that was that was a deep dive into into the T zero, which is totally awesome. But maybe we should back up a little bit and and uh, talk about the general thesis. You you've had written on you've written on and made videos on on so you have your uh, YouTube channel, uh, which is your company, Braun Capital. Braun Capital, and so thank you so much for, for visiting us from that. And you've made uh, videos on Netlist there. You've also written and published articles on Netlist. And so there's the thesis of you've written about there's the patent infringement lawsuit, which could be the biggest ever against Google. There's also Samsung and others, but there's the biggest one possibly ever at Google. But then they also have a semiconductor business that's growing quite quite rapidly. Uh, so can you can can and so can you can we, can we back up and talk about the thesis of Netlist? 
and then any any updates, and then we can then we'll get, get to the uh, questions here. Uh, if, is that how's that sound? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, let's uh, let me walk through the netlist story. Um, so I've covered netlist um for quite some time. I think about as long as I've been covering Cassava. Um, of course, Joe covers Cassava very well, and I actually learned about Cassava through uh reading about it from Joe. Um, so I've been covering it publicly for about a, almost two years, I think. I'm not entirely sure on the time, but anyways, I've been covering it publicly uh, for a while now. Yep. And one thing I want to say before we get too far into it, um, it's very complex. It has many moving parts and um, it can get be very hard to stay up to date. Yeah. Um, so what I, I, you know, I struggle because, you know, I follow multiple stocks. I struggle even to follow up, stay up to date with all the nitty gritty details of the different cases. So um, obviously following someone like Joe, who's talking to you about it um, every single day, different companies can help. Um, but specific to Netlist, I highly recommend their stock twits page. And um, there's a Reddit page um, for Netlist. Both of these resources have very um, intelligent uh, posters, uh, many of them with legal backgrounds who break down part, parts of different cases yeah. and update on every single little thing in the cases, every little filing. Um, and so if you really want to dive really deep, those are great resources that are going to be able to give you a lot of information. Um, kind of going into what Netlist is. So Netlist kind of has two elements. One element is it's a very small um, technology company. Specifically, it makes uh, chip technology mainly for servers. Um, that part of their business is growing currently um, about 100% a year. So it's a rapidly growing tech company yeah. in a field that is obviously insane demands. We saw all of the issues um, with chip productions and whatnot wow. um, with uh, supply chain issues. Um, it's actually an American-based company, which has its benefits with potential tariffs or anything else. Um, and so th they have very good technology and coming right now they have good technology they have over 100 patents but they also have a product coming up that's supposed to be a very green and efficient um chip called hyperdim and the big thing with this is one you know the big esg push in in today's investing world for a bit more green initiatives so server farms are massive sucking um energy intensive processes and those are mainly on carbon-based uh, fuels so anything more green is going to be seen very favorably by companies who are trying to like appease the esg committees um and then also saving energy saves money right energy. so that's a product that they they have that's going to be coming out eventually that's top notch yeah wow then you have the second part of the company uh which is the lawsuits of the company and this this element is of the company has been going since 2009 when they first sued uh, Google for infringement of um, of their patent. So basically, how this started, they they had a lawsuit against Google in 2009. Lawsuits going back and forth. Um, it's never been a uh, then the the judge does a cross section or asks for a random cross section of Google servers to be examined and. This has never been officially confirmed, but if you read between the lines, many people strongly believe that basically all those servers had Netlist technology. Wow! So then, what Google did was they they challenged the validity of the patents Netlist has. <laughs> um, so they were like, "Well, your patents aren't real." So for ten years, ten years, which wow. is actually crazy that a big company can just bully a small company for ten years and super expensive court battles basically trying to make them go bankrupt so they could buy up the patents on the penny yeah uh pennies on the dollar um they went and it went all the way through the 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 court process and this is will be important it was the 912 patent it yeah. went all the way through the court process up until right below the supreme court the last thing they could have done was put took it to the supreme court who really doesn't deal with patent issues yeah and <clears throat> they didn't so netless fully validated it they won that and that case resumed in about 2020. Yeah. Um, that case has been uh, ongoing again. Um, then they've had a few other, uh, that's the main case for the most amount of dollars um, with billion dollar potential, I believe that will set the potentially 
become the biggest patent infringement lawsuit in history. They also have some side cases with uh, Micron. Um, they had one with SK Hynix that they settled a few years ago. And then they have um, a, what originally was a partnership contract with Samsung where Samsung voided the contract by breaking the rules of the contract. And so then because they didn't have a contract to be using that uh, um, netless technology because they voided it became another patent infringement um, lawsuit. Wow. Um, I have, uh, have you, have you seen the graphic kind of going over from, all of the, from the so lawsuits, Joe? I saw from it. Stoked. Yes. I saw, I saw you put it in your article. Terrific, terrific uh, flow chart. Uh, yeah. Let me see if I can. So, here. yeah. So Stoked, S-T-O-K-D, um, uh, he is a poster on stock twits who is very informed on this information and has created a very in-depth graphic And one of their uh, in the in the battle, that same nine one two patent, they again challenged it, um, which has been kind of a controversial thing. Many people are upset about that because it went all the way through for ten years and was validated, and now a company rechallenged it and it's being revalidated. So, uh, um, so that's kind of a frustrating thing, and that's what most recently kind of really drove the stock price down to where it is today. So I just got the the graphic up here. Thank you for all of that. So. Uh, uh, you let me see. Let me share it on Zoom as well. Here, you 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 can look at it yourself. I guess. Do you, do you have it there up for yourself? Yeah, I have it. I, I got this one. This version is from your September article. Yeah. Okay. And um, so it's, if it's, if it's up for the people, it's up for the people, um, they can see it. And again, so this just shows you the level of detail this this message board poster puts into his work. Um, and it kind of goes over the different things. Again, this isn't fully up to date, especially because there's between when this was happened and today, there was a very important decision with the PTAB, um, um, basically the patent committee uh, with basically saying, oh yeah, you can, Samsung could challenge his patent again. There's an important decision with that, which is, I believe, not on this. Okay, okay. And so, what's what's the next thing? Where is? Do you want, can you can you walk us through the the Google part of the flow chart here, or is there anything? Anything? Yeah. Anything, so, anything kind of to see there or Google. Um, they they went. Google's attorney the the attorney netlist has against Google is um, Jason Cheesby, a top top notch lawyer who's never lost and actually overturned what was the previous largest patent infringement lawsuit in history, a billion dollar case. He's just a very talented lawyer. Um, and obviously he's going to be great in this case. So um, earlier this year, I believe it was, they had a bunch of delays once the case came back um, with different things with judges and whatnot. And finally uh, went into um, uh I believe it's intervening rights. Okay. Uh, in essence, what they did, again, this is very complex and I don't have a law background, but in essence, what they did was they determined the scope of the lawsuit. So Netless wanted, for example, to sue all the way back to that 2009 date and even before, um, and they determined what could be in the lawsuit for um, specifically, um, I believe is like two, four, and eight dim technologies. So those are like different like scales of the RAM technology. Okay. 
and and they determined which ones can and cannot be included in the the argument, which ones Google potentially is liable for. Okay. Um, and now that that case is continuing to go on and on, uh, but right now it is my understanding again that um that it is paused while they wait for the revalidation of this patent through that Samsung challenge. I see. I see. Okay. How long do is there? Do we have a, any particular timeline or any guesses on that? Um, I I I don't know uh, an exact timeline. And it's things like that, the very specific details like that. Um, again, I'd recommend you look at these sources just because I don't have that information. Okay. Thank you. Terrific. Let's. We can take some. Uh, so that's a terrific background. Thank you for all of that, Jacob. We can take some. Do, 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 do. Pale says, hey, Jacob, glad to have you come on. I stayed up to watch. Would be nice for me if you could uh, do this in the morning when I'm normally awake. <laughs> Captain Catnip says, team netlist. Laholi says, thanks, Joe. You are so awesome. I'm sure he means and Jacob. Florida here, Captain Catnip. Happy Sunday. Here we go. Thoughts on the possibility of netlist paying dividends once it wins its cases and gets big and profitable, uh, please, uh, and then and they go along with the dividends there, is this, sometimes when we talk about the shorting, uh, we say a way for them to stop doing that is if you're paying dividends, now the shorts have to, the fake shares have to pay dividends too. So we, maybe perhaps we could tie that in there as well. But thoughts on possibility of Netlist paying dividends once it wins its cases and gets big and profitable. Yeah, so... Really, the the philosophy behind in like in a financial aspect, why you pay a dividend, I think this is important to think about. So, though Warren Buffett talks about this a lot, the idea behind a dividend is if a company believes they can create more than one dollar in return yeah. by holding on to that money, then by giving it back to you, they should keep that money. Yeah. If they can't um, create more than one dollar in return then they should pay a dividend or other ways of giving back capital, um, such as buy, doing a stock buyback. Again, stock buybacks, that's a whole nother thing because you need to buy it at a good price. But we'll talk about dividend change. So basically, if a company can has ways to use that money productively, they should not pay a dividend. Yep. So it, let's look at Netless's case. Um, there's a lot of R&D that they they have. Um, once they get win these lawsuits, they get they if they win these lawsuits, they'll get a large um, influx of cash and um, so they'll be in a very good cash position. They have a rapidly growing company, com, uh, tech at a uh, company part. Um, and I would find it very surprising if they had that much cash, their their company's growing, if they could find enough ways to deploy that cash. So if that is the case, they can't find companies to buy out yep. or new technologies to research into and and, and, and create products in, then um, it would be strategic to um, pay out a dividend yep. and likely for them to pay out a dividend, in my opinion. Brilliant, brilliant answer. Thank you. Uh, and are they, do they happen to be highly shorted as 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 a, as a by the way with that? And are they a highly shorted stock or not? So uh, my understanding is they they are very shorted. Um, the other thing is they they have like 220 million shares and their volume sometimes is 100,000 for the day. Wow. So they're very low volume stock. Um, but again, I think a lot of the reporting and different things aren't as um, regulated or strict on the OTC market. So we don't really have a lot of that information, but I believe it is a very shorted company. Um, not as much now because they're in a very good financial position, but especially when they were near bankruptcy um, only a few years ago when their stock was in um, the pennies. Yeah, they were they were very short. Many people thought they were going to fail. Interesting. Thank you. Ter terrific. And great, uh, great conversation about what you can do with your capital. You can pay a dividend or you can buy back or you can do R&D or you can do acquisitions. So, uh, terrific stuff there. Thank you. Uh, and then Pale says, please talk about the case last Friday and future dates. We had a, we had some sort of a ruling, what, two Fridays ago or... Uh, I believe that was... I, I, I believe you're talking about the, um, the PTAB yeah. Um, thing with Samsung. Basically, what they did was they rechallenged the Samsung patent. And I interest. I recently read um, a piece on this. Um, I have it in front of me. Uh, I believe they posted it on Reddit. 
but it, in essence this ptab court um so this 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 court that determines if a patent can be challenged again or not um is incentivized to allow as many challenges as they can um so as wrong as that is it basically it, it, it's incentivized to allow challenges and then they have to go through the the legal process of all that Ugh. um so that happened and again i don't have a ton of the specific information on that um because i haven't had a, been following it crazy closely okay uh, thank you. And then here's a here's a fun one. Joe Vince says, "What can the stock price?" Oh, this is well. We can, we can do this for for. Well, he's asking for Sava. So five thousand one hundred dollars is what Sava can be in a few years. But uh, let's 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 just make it for Netlist. What can the stock price of Netlist be after two or three years? So what what is the upside here? If, if everything went the, the the what's the best case scenario? Um, I'm gonna pull up real quick the current market cap to work from this um so our current market we're currently at a dollar 80 uh, a market cap of 400 million um for a while we were trading at um you know about four or five dollars about a billion dollar market cap um so if in these re so the first thing is you have a fast growing um company well the, the market's bad which kind of hurts us but it's been terrible yeah. you have a fast growing company um and if you can continue to grow your profits fast and it's a profitable company, it's not uh, the, like the, the business is profitable even with these expensive lawsuits. Wow. So it's a very profitable and fast growing underlying aspect. Um, when they finish these lawsuits, you're going to have a ton of licensing technologies pointing a ton of cash. Yeah. Um, I, it's very difficult to put an exact price target, but I would say if if. If the key is again these lawsuits, if they are able to win these lawsuits, we're at a four hundred million dollar market cap. You're looking at a few billion, let's say two yeah. to three billion in cash that would come in, plus licensing deals, which would bring cash in yearly. Uh, but those that two to three billion dollars, that would take the price. Um, so we're at four hundred. If it's two billion, that's five times. Um, let's say six times um, the current price. Um, just from the cash, but you would also have a multiple on that cash because again, you can use that cash to do things and continue to grow faster. So let's say you were looking at like seven times, so maybe like fifteen dollars ish. Yep. Uh, but then uh, you have other aspects. Well, then you would have all that additional recurring revenue um, from those licensing deals, and you would have. Um, there's they were somewhat blackballed by the industry because they're in lawsuits with all these major players. Right. So you would have that lifted. Um, maybe this hyperdim technology that we're talking about could become revolutionary. Um, so I've seen price targets up to a hundred dollars. Um, I say realistically that ten to twenty dollars. Um, if if these lawsuits go favorably, I would be surprised if it's not at least ten to twenty dollars. Interesting. That sounds very fair. And I'd like the analysis. Thank you very much. Uh. Pale says, have you guys heard of the exposed lying short campaign that was launched against Farmland Partners in 2018? Yes, the lying shorts got exposed. That was one of the few successful prosecutions of these guys. Uh, he tells us to read. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, what's going on? Okay. Thoughts on Netlist having a factory in China. So I wanted to ask about that. So is there, they, you said that they're U.S. based, is the manufacturing also U.S. based or is there any uh, Thai, any, uh, what is that, what is the uh, island over there calling, uh, I can't remember at the moment, um, Singapore, see, uh, or, uh, not Singapore, uh, I, I, I'm blanking on it too now actually. I'm blanking on it too, whatever it's called over there, but is, the, is it manufactured in the, everything manufactured in the U.S.? Um, no, uh, and that was, uh, that's, that's, I don't know if any of it's being manufactured in the U S right. um, the company itself is based in Irvine, California, yeah. um, which is right in Silicon Valley, but, um, almost, I, I, I believe I was reading something that's like 95% of advanced chips yeah. are made in, um, the place we can't remember. <laughs> I'm gonna look this up because I, I I don't know why I'm blanking on Me this. Me too. Yeah. Uh, Taiwan. Taiwan, Taiwan, not Thailand. Uh, Taiwan. It's like um, 
95% of advanced chips are built in Taiwan. And then other one, a lot of some of that other percent is built in um, China. And then a little bit of the other ones are built in South Korea and Japan. So um, a political topic that happened recently was the Chips Act. Um, so they're building a bunch of chip manufacturing um, uh, factories in the U.S., uh, part of the problem with it is because of how small and specific these technologies are on these chips, it takes, you know, I, I read five to seven years to eat, build one to be able to build chips. And then also, um, it's very specific, the people you need to be able at these factories, the, the workers. So we don't have any of that skill in our country. Um, so we're going to either have to get it from Taiwan or other places um, or, um, somehow train it up wow. so that's going to be a, a while before the u.s is ramped up and that granted we signed a, a very expensive um uh, bill to do this um uh, recently the chips bill yep. um but once that is you know up to date then less manufacturing will be in taiwan and less um, reliance on them but every company builds yep. their chips over in that region of the yep. country or of the world yep. for the advanced chips yep 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 yeah peter zion was talking about that about how just everything everything you said all the advanced stuff comes from there and it's going to take such a long time to build it here even though we're starting yeah yep thank you for that uh uh stoked uh pale primate says stoked and bolivar shag nasty are the are two people on are those the two people on stock twits you just uh, tell them saying to uh to to, to watch yeah, yeah. those 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 are both very informed and great individuals to learn from on stock twits. <laughs> Shag nasty. Kareem says, yeah, uh, they are the only ones I really listen to them too. And the other guy, Tom or something. So yeah. Okay. So those good guys to listen to. I've uh, another person is um, hedge apple Joe. I believe he's more on Reddit. Okay. Um, he's someone I've uh, learned a lot from. Excellent. And then, Pale likes, Pale likes that you have a math background. Jacob doesn't have a law background, but he has a math background, which I think is better. You got math and computer science, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, pretty impressive. Are you and are you still in, are you done school? Um, I'm just finishing up school and uh, then going to go work as a software engineer. Yeah, and, and you're actually already doing that as well, right? Already. Yes, I work part time. Wow, wow. Hey guys, your opinion on the claim construction we just had. Thank you. Uh, the claim construction. So I think that was the the uh, the one we just talked about two Fridays ago. The claim construction. Uh, yeah, I believe that was the Samsung case. This says that ten fourteen was the claim construction in that Samsung case. Yep. And then Stockton says. Netlist just appealed that decision to initure the IPR for a fifth time. 32 a share. Examination. I, I think the I, I think the key with um with the Netlist we've seen is um the court system is set up to take a long time to be very inefficient and to favor big companies with a lot of money. Yeah. Um and I think with Cassava also, we've seen that also um, kind of the way Wall Street works for these yeah. small developing companies is it favors the big players yeah. with a lot of money, with a lot of resources. It's very true. It's very true. The one movie they say, if you want uh, justice, go to a brothel. If you want to get screwed, go to court. <laughs> so... <laughs> uh... Uh, Horace, Horatio says examination on the P tab instituted on M patent. Uh, and then, oh, here is there. Yeah, people are saying Taiwan. Uh, here is a couple people saying Hedge Apple Joe is Bolivar Shag Nasty. So that's good people to follow. Yep. Tom Lu says, Sava is much more to win. Netlist needs more time. So about time. Do we have a next catalyst that we're looking at? So Stockton, Stockton, I think Stockton laughed at my joke. Stockton, were you laughing at my joke? I don't think I got a, I don't think I got a smile from Jacob, but. <laughs> I, I think the, I think the biggest 
catalyst coming forward will be if um, Netlist is able to fight off this PTAB um, and patent questions. Um, if they were to fight these off quickly, that would be a big catalyst. And I think um, so that that event took the stock from um, about 340 down to 180. So it cut the price in half. So you would you would about double the price if they were to get this back. Um, so the quicker they're able to get it back um, and delay that, um, then you get all these court cases rolling in again. Um, it, the the company, what one thing that's different people have different opinions on how the company has handled things. Um, uh, similar to I'm sure Cassava or other situations, uh, the company's kind of held out for a while. Um, it's likely that they've had multiple settlement offers, probably not what they want. Um, but uh, again, then the court cases would be over, they would be able to go on with their business. So does the company change their strategy at some point with more and more delays um, and finally take that settlement and just go on? Or do they go for the yeah. jugular and try to get the biggest, most painful thing they can get and fully see through all these cases? Um, I think that's an interesting thing. Um, some people say, well, the company would settle and they point to the SK Hynix deal as an example. But you got to remember with that deal, they were on the brink of bankruptcy and they they really needed a deal with the money and then um, the ability for the supply agreement and whatnot. So with the SK Hynix deal, I think that was a unique situation. And that was they took a subpar deal on a smaller company. So they still had the bigger fish and the resources to go after them. Yep, so I think... Yeah, again, just what will the company's strategy be going forward? Um, I would love to hear from the the CEO and for him to talk on it, but I haven't seen anything from him that that really gives me any confidence either way. Yep. And one thing I wanted to point out is when there's delays, it seems like the shorts can attack and just just because there's time and then, and then any hint that things are going to be sped up, uh, as you're saying, and it, they don't even need necessarily success. Just that hint that, oh, things are about to happen. It seems like the shorts would have to cover. So that would be interesting. And then Dell Price says, I'm old enough to remember the games IBM played with Microsoft doing the same thing, dragging it out in court. And then Kareem says, I read an article. Is it true that patent judges, patent judges get some kind of kickback or financial benefit from either the number of cases they work per year or something? Do you guys know anything about that? That would seem to be like a perverse incentive, uh, if if that's uh, if that's if I, I guess I, I I frankly I don't know anything about that. But have you ever heard of that? How the way the judges get? Into, yeah, yeah. Actually, that that article I was kind of talking about. I'm sure we're probably reading the same thing. Oh. Um, someone had sent it to me. Um, but yeah. So in essence, what they were were saying was. Um, these this specific court, the like PTAB court, yeah. um, incentivizes requests because um, I, I'm I'm reading it right here. So the board was founded in 2020 or 2012. Um, it's supposed to be an objective third party, um, but it's fueled by these court cases with big tech trying to invalidate cases because PTAB is paid case by case. So they're unfairly incentivized to take on cases. Moreover, the judges have been discovered to regularly get kickbacks or bonuses when they can invalidate one of these patents because it doesn't matter that they've fought for 10 plus years. They invalidate it. No more money on the fringe none of these billion dollars that they could potentially lose interesting that's terrible Ugh. Ugh. geez if things weren't bad enough Ugh. well thank you for that color uh, jacob and thank you for the question uh, kareem trade flow says let's hope judge gilstrap ignores the samsung ipr request it's ridiculous that the ptab would even grant that it's obvious that samsung and google are rpis parties of interest yeah so 
Gilstrap, um, from my understanding, is a real no nonsense judge and um, does everything in his possibility to push things through. Um, I'm looking through this because I believe um, he recently had a family member pass away, which um, is going to slow him down, I'm sure, a little bit. But he's known, um, if if my memory serves me correctly, he's known as a, a, a no-nonsense judge who really pushes stuff through Good. and gets it um, gets it all figured out. This, so then that could be good. This next question from Jay says, Micron moved to Texas. Does that mean both Micron and Samsung are will, will be in front of Judge Gilstrap? So uh, there's from this chart from Stoked, um, Micron has three cases. One is um, what one was with uh, in West Texas in front of a, in front of a different judge. But it looks like that case um, isn't being actively done. And then there's another, it was stayed. Yes. And then there's two other cases, um, both in front of Gilstrap. Um, and those are in the East Texas court. So there's two Texas courts. But uh, one important thing, though, is uh, I believe the reason why Netless is pushing them to Texas is because the, the Texas court system is very favorable, favorable to these small companies. They um, they don't like the nonsense from these bigger tech companies. Yes, right, right. Yeah, they, uh, that's that's it. Yeah, they don't like uh, too much regulation. They don't like uh, big, big tech uh, nonsense. Yeah, very interesting point. Uh, Kareem says it was his daughter passed away. That's that's horrible. That's too bad to hear. And Stockton says the same thing. He lost his daughter on ten twenty one. Sad for sure. That's well. That is terrible news. Well, uh, so and and any uh, I think that wraps up the questions, Jacob. It's been forty two minutes. Really, really appreciate your time, uh, Jay. Let's see. I think Jay has one more. Are they still the leader, the patent holder for NNDM? NNDM. Um, I am not sure. I'm, um, I would have to research more on that. Okay, great. Uh, and then Trade Flow says Google and Netlist have agreed on a joint stay on the California until they resolve the Samsung case. So how can the PTAB say they don't have any interest with Samsung? The stay proves it. That's what he was saying was ridiculous. So, um, well, the, the thing is, my understanding is the, the stay is because the patent relevant to the Google case is the one being challenged. Um, so while there is argument about collusion and whatnot, um, I don't think if that is that understanding is correct. I don't think that is a f a good argument or a good example of that collusion. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, David says, if memory serves, the Micron Samsung case has a case management conference scheduled for November seventeenth. That case is to establish Markman dates. So that I guess that may be the next. Uh, Next catalyst to look at is November 17th. The Micron Samsung case is a case management conference. Uh, the case is to establish Markman dates. Thank you, David Carter. Yeah, and I and then um, so from when I originally wrote my last article, um, the Netlist was originally at that time seeking to combine two cases, a Micron case and a Samsung case, both under Judge Gillstrap in East Texas together to one case, which it appears that um, they were successful and they had those marksman dates. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And for those that don't know what a markman date is, what's a markman date? Okay. Um, let me think about how to best explain this. Um, I'm not I'm looking this up to be it, yeah, it's some, some sort of a, of a of a scheduling legal a legal date. Yeah, um, it's not coming up right now. Yeah, I am not entirely sure on the exact definition. Yeah, that's fine. So I don't want to again go oh, into yeah. some sort of hearing date, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah we got it. Yep, yep. Terrific. Uh, so so 
And then, so David says, the CMC is with Gilstrap. Since his family tragedy, he's been releasing, he has been releasing new court documents. And Jay says, when will they have a settlement after November 17th, six months or one year? So hard to know how long these things take. The, then David says the Mark, yeah. yeah. David says the Markman tr trial is called claim construction. Okay, thank you. Um, and and uh, on that settlement question, um, one, you never know um, when these things, because you can always have unexpected delays. I don't think many people expected Samsung to challenge that that patent again. Um, number two, um, I am of the belief that Netlist is in somewhat of a state where they won't settle. Um, they're going to try to push these cases as far as they can and try to get go for the jugular, almost more for the point, uh, to make a point. Um, so with that belief, um, I would not expect a settlement soon. Again, I could be wrong. Um, they have settled before, uh, for example, the SK Hynix deal. But I think that they're really going to try to push these as big as to into as big of thing as possible and if they're profitable then then i like you say then they, they can finally do that you make a great point that they were not before and they needed the money when they had to settle before uh david carter says so the mark the markman trial is called claim construction so it's for the judge and both parties to establish similar definitions so they can lay out claims and figure out damages from unified claim agreements interesting okay yeah, they're, they're like, thank you, David. Um, and like I said, there's, uh, whether on these message boards, whether on Reddit, there's many um, informed individuals following along, um, sharing their opinion, many with very strong legal backgrounds. Yep. Um, so definitely, um, it's a very complex case yeah. that I, I personally struggle to follow up, follow and fully understand at times. Um, so I would highly recommend checking out those sources. It's funny how this is so illegal and cassava is so illegal. It's we've the whole the whole world is getting more litigious. It's it's funny. I think we're going to see more and more of this. Companies doing everything they can. The big the big corporations doing everything they can to the little ones, and everything turning into a court case when you when you go for the when you go for the small caps. And one more from David here. For example, in the non nine twelve patents, so the non nine twelve patents. Last Friday, there was a claim construction Markman hearing with Samsung under Magistrate Payne. That specific portion has jury trial May 23rd. Terrific. And then uh, Magistrate Payne, I think, is Roy Payne. And somebody called that person Royal Payne. So <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, so... And Jacob, really appreciate your time. It's, it's 45 minutes. Thank you for all the background on uh, on the, the company in general, both the, the semiconductor side and the, 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 the trials side. Thank you for the, the commentary on T0 and NASDAQ. Really interesting, that, uh, the idea. Do they have, so they, they need to get back to $2 and, and stay there for, what, 30 days? Is that the idea? Or why did, why, why, yeah. So for NASDAQ? Yeah. So the my belief, I first I think it's five dollars, five. But that's not the one that is the problem. Um, the problem is, um, I believe that um, the CEO Hong, yeah, um, does not have a board of directors board of direct around him. And to be a public company, you have to have a board of directors, or to be on the Nasdaq, you have to have a board of directors of I, I believe at least like five people. I believe that's the issue is the board of directors. And Hong doesn't want the board of directors I because with these cases, he wants to be the one solely making the decisions. Wow. Again, my my understanding and my belief. Yeah, because come to think of it, I think NASDAQ is just $1 that, that you need. And uh, yeah, that, so that, that's interesting. The, uh, you would think he could just fill it with people that are, that are his people. <laughs> So th there's also a there's also costs to be on Nasdaq. It's like four hundred thousand dollars a year or something like that. So they can save money in the meantime. Uh, Dell says thank you too for the discussion.
And are there any arguments between Samsung and Google? Are they do they get along? Are they colluding? Are they arguing? Or any are, are they fighting over any of their stuff? Um, like uh, if Google or Samsung have any lawsuits against each other outside of this case, I'm sure they've had some. Um, if you're talking about specifically to this case, I don't think anything would go public. They weren't, they're not going to publicly argue. And, um, I haven't really seen anything like major. Okay. Thank you. And then we've been following IKT that fell below a dollar. I think you need to maintain a dollar to stay listed. Trade flow is saying uh, in order to get listed, it's four dollars. So it seems like four dollars plus the board is maybe what they need. They had that four dollars for at least a year. Yeah, um, yeah. And again, they didn't ever pursue it because I believe the, the board. Interesting. Okay. So okay. So great stuff. So thank you so much, Jacob, for uh, for all that stuff. I think we answered everybody's questions. Fluttershy says, hi, I'm new to your stream. Great to see you, Fluttershy. Thanks for being here. Uh, and you came to the best one. You came to, uh, to Jacob's stream, so thank you so much for that. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to go to Jacob's stream either now or later or something like that, and we're going to uh, talk about cassava. <laughs> and then Fluttershy says, could you talk about arguments with McDonald's and Chick-fil-A? <laughs> well, Chick Fil A uses peanut oil, so so I'm out of that one. And then one more from David here: SNG, Samsung, and Google have been working together since 2014 and have indemnification agreements in place. Samsung admitted as much. They have ping ponged and paid for each other's litigations in the past. So I didn't know that. So not only are they battling these two, but these two are colluding together to do this. Is that does that sound right to you, Jacob? Um, I believe I re I remember seeing something about that, um, but there is they've you know worked together because they have some overlap. Um, but I, I uh, to the previous question, yep. um, the one we that one we were originally discussing, I, I I don't think they've had like public arguments yeah. uh, with each other. Um, and, but um, I, yeah, and it seems like it seems like maybe they're privately colluding. So uh, Pale Primate says thank you for coming on. Jacob Kareem says thanks, guys, for the awesome information. Fluttershy says it, is McDonald's better than Burger King? <laughs> so uh, no, it's not. Burger King is better because they flame broil instead of fry. So there you go. So, Jacob, thanks so much uh, for uh, coming on. Braun Capital is the YouTube site. You can also catch Jacob on Seeking Alpha, all his articles. Twitter is, what's your Twitter handle, my friend? At Real Jacob Braun. That's the, probably the best platform if you want to follow me because um, I post things from anything I do. Excellent. At Real Jacob Braun, the best platform to follow you. Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And we will look forward to uh, the 17th of November for the next uh, Catalyst and take it from there. Uh, thanks so much. And anything else before we go, Jacob? No, thank you again for having me on, Joe. It's always a, a, a pleasure of mine. Uh, my, and, and the pleasure is all mine, my friend. Thanks so much. And thanks, everybody, for being here. See ya!